Welcome to Ringsiders Wrestling. I'm Colin McInnes. Today I'm joined by the promoter of Warrior Wrestling based in Chicago. We've got Steve Tortorello. Hope I said it right. Steve, thank you for joining us. Colin, you nailed it, and I appreciate being here with you and with everybody listening. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, Steve, uh, like I mentioned, we've got uh, you the promoter of Warrior Wrestling, and Warrior has, in recent months, made quite an impact, uh, especially with people who are watching on Fight. Uh, that's where I first discovered it. Um, it was it popped up as one of the upcoming shows, and I was like, I need to check that out. Um, and Fight TV were kind enough to say, do you want to cover the show? So I was like, absolutely. And I looked at your website and I was like, how have I not really seen much of Warrior before? Because you've got uh, some pretty stacked cards in the past. I mean, <laughs> to name a few, you've got Brian Cage, Brian Pillman Jr., old Brian's, um, you know, it, and it's it's kind of gone under the radar with me. And I am wish I'd have seen it earlier. And... I think like this um, Friday Night Light show that you just had, I think it kind of, especially on Twitter, got a lot of interaction when I was covering it at the time. I saw a lot of GIFs coming from the show. And you know a show is doing well when people are putting the time in to do GIFs. So, Steve, I mean, what's it been like in the last few months? I know you've had the pandemic going on, but what's been going on in the world of Warrior Wrestling? Well, great question. So we have, like everybody else in the world, essentially been on hold for about six months. So normally we do four shows a year and we try to put on four incredible super shows with dream matches, with talent from all different promotions who could only face each other at a warrior wrestling show. And that's been our MO for the last, last couple of years. And we had done that in February. We had a show that had a variety of different people, uh, Bully Ray, Brian Pillman, mm -hmm. Tessa Blanchard, Taya Valkyrie, the Rascals, the Stronghearts, you name it. So it was a big, big show in February. And we were getting ready for another show in late May, early June. And we had some names on the table, some ideas being developed. And then the pandemic hit and everything just froze. And so for the first couple of months, we decided, oh, we're just going to lay low a little bit. We released some matches online, did some content and some watch alongs. We put out a best of DVD. And then it became very clear to us that this is not going to be normal, at least in the United States, anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And so we went back to an idea that my best friend in the world and uh, my right hand man in Warrior Wrestling, Eric Hamilton, he had this idea about a year ago. And we didn't do it in 2019, but he had suggested what if we do a show on the football field? We can do it like a picnic atmosphere, like an outdoor music festival. And ultimately, for a variety of reasons, we did not do it in 2019. Well, we dusted it off midsummer when we got guidance from the state of Illinois about how outdoor spectator events could proceed. And we took a look at that guidance and we said, wait a second, this is exactly like what we were thinking about. Mm -hmm. And so we started the wheels in motion. We reached out to talent. And we had the show, I'm, I'm sure many people have seen online. If not, you can check out our Twitter, the, the drone shots. We did a socially distanced, safe wrestling show outdoor in the school's American football stadium. And so uh, this is this past Friday, and it went incredibly smoothly. And we were just, we were thrilled with how it went. And now actually we're thinking about doing another one. Oh, uh, dude, you've got to do it again. I, I think it looked cool. I mean, you made the most of a situation there. And like with the drone shots, I saw them on your Twitter. That was just a, such a cool visual um, from the from the drone over the wrestling ring and seeing all the socially distanced people there. Uh, I think going forward, I think the wrestling industry and entertainment in general has changed and due to the pandemic. And I think for a, the long term, it's going to change too. And I know GCW have been doing some shows where it's somewhat normal but still socially distanced i think you took it to a, another level where using that field was just such a cool idea and like you said you, you could make that into like a an annual thing where you have that kind of open atmosphere event and i think that would be really cool to see and yeah i mean like you said it's it's not really being done before you had the idea before but then it just lent itself to the current situations going on in the world and how, how did the talent receive it? I mean, did, did they have a, a good time wrestling in that kind of environment? You know, they did. They were actually just thrilled to be wrestling in front of fans again. You know, and we have talent who are AEW people, Impact Wrestling people, um, some who are just on the independents. And even if 
They are the biggest AEW stars. Brian Cage, as you mentioned, is one of our regulars, and Brian's been on every show. He is just coming off the title picture for AEW Dynamite, but mm -hmm. he hasn't wrestled in front of a single fan since February. In fact, Lance Archer, who's a, another good friend of ours, Lance said the last time he wrestled in front of fans was our show in February, and then the next time he wrestled in front of fans was our show on Friday night. So they were just thrilled to see people. Yeah, I bet. I mean, like everyone we've spoken to, uh, we've done a lot of interviews over this lockdown period because there's wrestlers who have not had much to do, so they've been ready to do these interviews. And every single one of them has said, I just miss people. I miss fans. I miss hearing any kind of reaction, like a cheer, a boo, anything. Just something, because it's great that you can wrestle in front of no crowd still and still earn some money and still be on TV. But without the fans, it's not really wrestling still. Like, it's wrestling is two parts. It's the wrestlers and the fans. And without yeah. one or the other, it's not really wrestling. And that's what a lot of people have been saying. So, like, the fact that Lance Archer had his last match review and then his first match back is really cool. Um, I mean, as, as a newcomer to Warrior Wrestling, and I say newcomer, I've just remembered, I... All in weekend uh, back in 2018, mm -hmm. uh, I was in Chicago for uh, All In, and you had a show that weekend, I believe. We did. Yeah, that's the first time I heard you actually. Like, um, I remember my friend Nate, who lives in Indiana, he said there's a Warrior Wrestling show in Chicago, and we couldn't make it because we were flying back, I believe, or it's or we'd only just got there. I can't remember, but there was a reason we couldn't go. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. But now, next time when we come over, we'll definitely be checking out uh, Warrior Wrestling. Um, but do you find, like, um, now you're streaming on Fight TV and everything, Do you have you had, like, a, a big increase in how, uh, how many people are seeing your show and how much popularity you've gained and stuff? Great question. So, it, yes and no. So, the no, because, as you just said, we have a lot of people who have seen our shows because they've been in for All In and All Out weekends. Mm -hmm. So, our second show was after the day after All In, and our third show was the day after All Out. And, and there are so many, many people in the boat that you're in who have told us when we'd hand them a flyer at All In or All Out, oh, gosh, I'm flying out tomorrow. If I would have known, I would have flown out yeah. on Monday. And so um, there are some people who were in town and saw our shows those two weekends. And so they continue to buy our shows on Fight TV. But also, I think just because of the pandemic and because so few wrestling shows are running, this show particularly got a lot of buzz. And I actually, just while you were speaking, I pulled up the email from Fight. They emailed me uh, a few days ago to say where we had buys for the show. And obviously the vast majority were in the United States. Second is the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, Germany, Australia, Canada, the Netherlands, Japan, Puerto Rico, the Philippines, Kuwait, and Sweden all bought our show this past Friday, Friday Night Lights. That's awesome. So you've got like a global yeah. reach there, right? That's not just national or like I'd expect this to be people from the UK buying it. We've got a hotbed for wrestling here. But the fact that you've got Sweden and you know like germany as well that's european uh countries buying your pay-per-view that's really good to hear like um i mean like i said you'd expect us to buy it where the uk is mad for wrestling but was it quite uh overwhelming to see like you know so so much interest in your products yes you know, especially I did not expect at all when we shared those drone shots on Twitter. I just put those out there. Our, our, somebody who works at the school with us uh, flew the school's drone up, took those pictures just out of curiosity to show what it looked like. And we put those pictures up just to just to put them out there so people saw it. I did not expect that to blow up like it did. And I think it's a testament to the difference between hearing about something and seeing something. Because mm -hmm. we told everybody we promoted what we're going to do for social distancing, for safety. But the ability to actually see it in action, it's online that we did not expect and was frankly pretty cool. So now we feel the pressure on us. Next time we do it, we have to do it just as good, if not better. Oh, absolutely. And I think what was really cool is I, I had no idea that the, um, this guy was wrestling on your show, but um, pretty good friends with Crash Jackson. Uh, oh. We interviewed him um earlier this year and i've actually become fairly good friends with him i think he's a great guy and i was i had no idea he was wrestling on the show and i was just watching it and i was like 
is that Crash? <laughs> and then afterwards, he, he posted a, a picture of him at Warrior Wrestling, and I was like, yes, I, I love Crash Jackson. So um, I was over the moon that you've um, you've got Crash Jackson there now. Um, what made you pick up Crash? Because to me, he's just such an underrated worker, and I think he's going to have a big year the end of this year and next year. I think it's Crashes for the taking, and I can see him doing pretty big things. Great question. So we are always looking for a combination of a couple of different things. We want some big, big names that people know and, and are dying to see, right? So we've had Pentagon and Phoenix and Mysterio and Sammy Guevara. But we also want names that we think the world should see. So we, we have a stage. It's a medium-sized stage. We're not a big stage like a national company, but we have a medium-sized stage. And there are some guys who have only performed on a smaller stage. And I think they need the shot on a medium stage. So Crash, for instance, um, we, was vouched for by some of our wrestlers. We like to give a guy guys a shot early in our show or in our pre-show who are vouched for by some of our main event guys and other people. Maybe they've trained them. Maybe they've worked with them. And we really trust our, our wrestlers, the guys that are with us regularly. When they say somebody is good and they deserve a shot, we give them a shot. And so that's yeah. how Crash came through. Um, via recommendation, I believe, from the Rascals um, mm, on yeah, uh, on our show. Right. And that's that's what we're looking for. We're looking for not only the now, but we're looking for tomorrow's great name as well. Yeah, that's really good to hear because, like you said, there, there's plenty of uh, big names on your shows. You've got Brian Cage, for example, and Brian Pillman Jr. I don't think anyone's strangers to those names. Um, Brian Cage is pretty much a household name with wrestling nowadays. It's is a big deal, uh, but it, you've got to look after the future too. And um, Crash is someone I see being like that. Um, but yeah, you've got to look after and make your own stars too, because even Brian Cage, at one point, he was like in Crash's position where he was looking for these opportunities. And I mean, like, is is there anyone in particular, like, if you could fantasy bring in any talent? Any indie talent, who would it be? Who's like your dream person to bring into Warrior? Wow, great question. Um, we have honestly been very lucky because over the course of our shows, we had Rey Mysterio wrestle. We were his last match before he went back to WWE. We've had Will Ospreay wrestle. We've had Minoru Suzuki wrestle. Uh, we've had Cage and Archer and the Lucha Brothers. Super mm -hmm. crazy. Um, I, I'd have to sit back and think who is on our bucket list that we haven't had yet. Um, Moxley, I, I would love to have if he's ever willing to take dates outside of AEW. Um, I think, you know, who, who's recently signed to New Japan within the last year, but used to be a true freelancer, Kota Ibushi has been mm -hmm. a, a dream choice of mine for a long time. And now he's fully signed with New Japan. So uh, Kota Ibushi's out there as well. We were able to use Suzuki because he's a true freelancer. No one owns Minoru Suzuki. No and one so can. we were able to contact him <laughs> and work with him. Um, Robbie Eagles is another one I'll say. You know, Robbie was, we talked to Robbie several times about a couple of different shows shows and it just never came together scheduling wise but Robbie is a guy we'd love to have on the show um I'm sure there are some I'm missing but there are but there are you know Tamatonga is another one oh, yeah. we've talked to Tamatonga and Tangaloa numerous times it's just never worked out schedule wise so it's a a lot of New Japan talent, actually, because we've worked with a lot of the current Impact talent, and we've worked with a lot of the current AEW talent. Obviously, WWE guys are off the market, and girls are off the market. So I think most of our dream matches would come from people from New Japan or across the pond coming over to visit, visit us. Well, speaking of like uh, where your company is right now, you said you're, you're not at that, like, you're not one of the major promotions, but you're not a small company either. You're in like the middle ground where you've definitely got people's attention. Do you want to take keep going with that? And like, do you want to be, be that big company eventually? Or are you happy where it is right now? Because a lot of companies, you know, they're, it's not saying that they're, they're not good, it, but some companies are happy being at a certain level. Is your goal to take Warrior to the very top? Great question. Um, right now, no just because Warrior is a passion project for all of us who work on it. So we've all got uh, day jobs that we love, that we, that we believe in. And so to take Warrior to the next level, to, to host more shows, to tour more regularly, 
um, would be an incredible investment of time that we would give if we could, but we've all got, again, families and day jobs and things yeah. like that. Um, and because our shows are so involved, you know, we fly people in from all over the world for our shows, not during the pandemic, but normally on a regular warrior show, we have talent from Japan, from Mexico, from Canada, from the UK. And that is just such an involved process. I joke about how in the month leading up to a warrior wrestling show, I am a part-time travel agent as I'm coordinating flights for 21 different people and pickups and visas and all of these things. And so I don't know that we could do that regularly right now. However, that's not to say in the future that if it grows, it's not something that our team would be, wouldn't be willing mm -hmm. to dedicate our energies to. But right now we're happy where it is. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like you, you have lights outside of, um, outside of your wrestling team. Everybody does. And I think a lot of people forget that and how much work goes into running shows. Um, when I was 19, I'm 31 now, I actually promoted two shows in the local area. And that was an absolute nightmare. Um, <laughs> they were only small shows. I wasn't flying people in. The furthest people were coming was 60 miles down the road. And even doing that was an absolute nightmare. I was literally having nightmares of, I might not be able to get this person to come down. The ring might not arrive. I was having shows on the beach for for some reason. I was just having all these <laughs> nightmares about what might go wrong. Um, and I can't imagine what it's like doing a show where people are flying in and you've got big names on your show and you've got to make sure all the production's right. You you know, I, is it is it stressful or is it is, do you enjoy it so much that it doesn't feel like work? Both. I mean, it is very stressful. And I think, as you said, the number one worry is what if what if somebody doesn't get on their plane? Mm. What if um, a, a flight gets delayed or gets canceled? Actually, so quick story. Um, the show we had with Will Ospreay and Kurt Angle and Minoru Suzuki, Will was in Japan at the time and flying from Tokyo. Will overslept, overslept and missed his flight. And I was playing trivia here in Chicago. And so my phone was you know, in a basket because we couldn't use them during the trivia competition. And I I got my phone two hours later to just numerous calls and text messages from Will Ospreay about how he had missed his flight and he was able to eventually get another flight and get out. But that's the biggest fear is that something goes wrong with travel or coordination. It, it is a, a great deal of stress, but at the end of the day, it, it's proud stress. Yeah. And, and people often ask me during a show, like, aren't you enjoying the show? No, the show is the most stressful thing I've ever done. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy two hours after the show when I crack open a beer and have a hot dog and go, we did it. Yeah. And so that, the, the stress leading up to that moment of fulfillment is worth it because you sit back and you look at what you've helped create and you're proud of it. So it's stressful, you're, you're ripping your hair out, but at the end, you're proud of what you did and, it, and that is fulfilling and that is, is really incredible. You know, for me, you know, you started promoting at 19, that's incredible. I'm, I'm about to turn 35. And I feel like I needed every experience before I was 33 in order to do this well. So I had worked in college promoting speakers and concerts. I had owned and operated a sketch and improv comedy company for several years. I'd been involved with other tours. I'd been the principal of a school and organizing meetings and, and presentations, et cetera. And so I feel like I needed all of those skills in order to do warrior wrestling. And had I not had all those experiences, I don't know that I could have done it. So hats off to you for promoting at 19. Well, That's incredible. Thank you. But I, I do feel like it, looking back in hindsight, it, it was incredible to do. I really enjoyed it and I wouldn't change it for the world. But I did make some mistakes doing those shows. But I feel like those mistakes helped me a lot, even these days where I haven't made the same mistakes twice. And mm -hmm. I've been a lot more cautious with how I've approached things. So it definitely did teach me something. And I think a lot of people don't realize how much work actually goes into a show. And one of the reasons to stop doing it is because financially it was a huge burden. And I didn't even break even on both shows. And the amount of um, like planning to do it, I was a one-man band and I just thought, I, can't, I honestly am not cut out for this. Um, but it did help me a lot with like freelance work. Nowadays, I'm a freelancer. And I kind of apply that, what I did with that to my freelance work. But with, with you, I mean, what, what made you get into promoting? Was it always like you planned to be a promoter or did you ever want to be a wrestler? 
Great question. Uh, yes and yes. So actually, I after college for a few years, I lived in Los Angeles. I was doing a volunteer program where I was teaching in an under-resourced inner city school. And um, in addition to, to teaching during the day, I pursued all of my other loves at night. So I took um, a comedy classes at the Groundlings Theater in Los Angeles, which is a very famous comedy theater. And I also trained to be a wrestler. I spent six months training in Anaheim with a promotion called Mach 1. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, I was trained by Johnny Goodtime and actually Joey Ryan before Joey Ryan became a big name. And obviously, his, his star has fallen from grace significantly mm -hmm. this summer. Um, but at the time, obviously, none of that had occurred. And um, But I, I, tr I trained to be a wrestler for about six months, twice a week. Um, I, I never had a match. I never got that far. But I went through all the training with our class, and there were people in our class who had matches. So I, I knew in the back of my head, even training, I was never going to be a performer because I'm just not an athlete, and, yeah. and that's just not me. But I knew that if I didn't train and try, I, I would regret it forever. And so I did it for six months. I loved the time that I did it, and then I wrapped it up, and I was done. And I never thought about being a promoter really until years later, um, the comedy improv and sketch comedy group that I ran for a decade, we closed up shop in 2014. Everybody had grown up, moved away. We all got grown up jobs, et cetera. And a few years later, I really found myself itching for a creative outlet once again. And I thought, you know what? My other great passion besides comedy was wrestling. And I still followed indie wrestling and I was a diehard fan traveling all over the country to go to shows. And I thought maybe I can help out with a local independent promotion. So I started kind of knocking on the doors of local promotions and there really wasn't anything for me to do or to sink my teeth into. Mm -hmm. And that's when I said, maybe I'll do it on my own. And that idea really grew throughout 2017. And then at the end of 2017, we brought it into fruition and we began planning for the first Warrior Wrestling show in spring 2018. So I did train, although I knew I was never going to be a wrestler. And I didn't think I was going to be a promoter until after my other creative endeavors were over. And then I felt, you know what, I'm really being pulled to this. Hey, that's awesome, though. The fact that you didn't even plan to be a promoter, and you kind of just like, fell into the idea. And now look at it. I mean, it's, you've definitely done pretty well with that idea. So I mean, what I always want to know is like, it when I speak to promoters, do you have any plans to take it? I know, like you said, it's a lot of work. You have your job on the side and you don't want to take it to that next level yet. But would there be any any hopes of like seeing Warrior Wrestling in Europe, for example, or Warrior Wrestling UK? Because I think there's a fan base here for it. Wow, you know, I'll be totally honest with you. I just smiled as you said. I've never thought about that. You know, we've talked about would we ever tour it around the Midwest of the United States. But honestly, we, you know, we've got a great crew of people. A European vacation, you know, might work. I think we'd probably have to pair with someone who does it already in the UK, yeah. who knows venues and laws and things like that. But even maybe an exchange program, right? Maybe we we pair with, um, you know, a Progress. And maybe Progress isn't the right group because they work with WWE, etc. But mm -hmm. maybe we pair with a group of Rev Pro or something like that. And, and do a show where we head over there and bring some of our talent that always works with us and vice versa. I think that would you be know? just as cool, doing like a, yeah. a up thing because we've got, like I always say, we've, I don't know where our wrestling scene came from. It was almost like it popped up overnight. We yes. never had any promotions in the UK. We had two. We had the FWA in Portsmouth and we had All Star Wrestling where it's like the family camp shows, you know, family friendly stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's like where Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson, you know, he he wrestled and that's where he says he learned how to work a crowd because it's a different crowd every night of just families. They're not wrestling fans. They're just there for a holiday. And if you can make mm -hmm. them cheer for you, you can make anyone cheer for you. So those, that's the only promotions we ever had was All Star and FWA. And then it was like overnight we had a wrestling company in every city and two yeah. wrestling so there's no shortage of people you could pair up with. There's the Rev Pro would be amazing. I mean, I think you've got a very similar but also quite different roster which would complement each other. And you could get some really good matchups with that. But is that if you could pick one company, like any company in the world, to, uh, to pair up with and do like some kind of warrior versus event, which one mm -hmm. would it be? Wow. Um Wow, I'm hard pressed on that. I mean, obviously, I, I, I'll rule out the big ones, right? I'll rule out WWE and AEW yeah. and, and New Japan, et cetera. 
Um, I think RevPro would probably be towards the top of that list, as would maybe PWG in California. I used to go to their shows when I was oh, in LA. So and we actually have <laughs> quite a bit of the, the same talent as well. Yeah. Um, I think they're great. Beyond Wrestling is great. GCW is great here in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think RevPro would be really interesting because they have such, there are obviously some huge names and they have huge guest names that come through there but that as you said your scene in the uk has really really from 2015 to 2020 yeah. i would say probably 14 or 15 is when it started picking up out of nowhere yeah and, and it has produced just incredible talents and, and i think there are guys who have not been discovered yet in the united states who have rabid followings in small halls in england and across the uk that i think eyeballs in the u.s would do them good and vice versa. I think there are some great American indie workers that would get over easily over there. So I, I don't know who specifically RevPro jumps out, but I think that idea is fantastic. And now I'm very intrigued. <laughs> I'd love to see that. And as a huge fan of American indies, I mean, I, I, love, I love the British wrestling scene, but it was American indies which got me into indies because I used to just watch WWE and WCW. And then when I looked outside, I found um ring of honor and mm -hmm. there's around 2002 2003 and then i found uh like early tna and when it's kind of like an indie at the time because it was running weekly pay-per-views um but then i found pwg and chikara and it blew my mind how good it was so i've, I've always loved american indies and you'll find a lot of people in the uk crave american indies coming over or at least bringing their their guys over and i would love to see that like if we could somehow get a warrior relationship with a company here i guarantee you guarantee you it would, it would do well i have no doubts about it because we we've got a, a great wrestling scene but not just for our own talent we want to see people coming in from everywhere like we've got people coming in from europe we've got people coming in from the states japan and it's kind of like this melting pot of talent at the moment so if you do get chance to do it let us know and we'll be there yeah, let's. And if if your listeners are hearing this and have any connections, I mean, I I can uh, make some some out uh, some outreach to the guys at Progress and Rev Pro. I know a little bit just from past uh, working with them. But yeah, if, if other people in other promotions are listening and are interested, reach out to us. Let us know. You know it's interesting. You you brought up American Indies and how they're so different. I I have this theory that so in the United States in American football we have the NFL is the big league, and I am. I'm a deeply passionate fan of college football in the United States. I think it is simply a better game than the NFL because there are so many different types of offenses, so many different types of schools, and it's. I think it's a more exciting game. It's a more wide open game. You see more innovation, and what happens in college football eventually trickles up to the NFL. So, for example, things like mobile quarterbacks or the wildcat formation, etc., eventually make their way to the NFL. I think for rest wrestling it's the same thing i think the wwe was like the nfl for a long time and the american indies is where the innovation and the creativity was really happening and to me that's a much more exciting game than the mainstream main league and when aew came about essentially what they were was a consolidation of some of the best players and best ideas from the american indies so even though aew is now a major league in and of its own right it it was uh, it was the American Indies that birthed AEW, and that's, that's why I, I so feel cool. so. That's such a cool analogy. I love that. Yeah, that really yeah. Does make sense. Like it. I feel passionately about that. Like that, and that's why I want AEW to succeed. That's why I love when our talent gets a shot. Like when Warhorse was on AEW mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago, um, because it's that American indie ethos, but with big money behind it, and I just love to see that. Yeah, that, that's such a cool analogy. And I think that's how I'm going to see it from now on. Like it is, it's almost like AEW, yeah, it has the indie mentality, but with the budget. And I think that's what we've always wanted. Like somebody mm -hmm. who brings in these indie guys, but with a lot of money to give them and to put in, into production. That's the dream, right? As, as wrestling yeah. fans. And you mentioned uh, American football. Are you a hockey fan as well? I am a huge hockey fan. Blackhawks. The, the puck drops in about five minutes here. So when we stop uh, talking, that's the first thing I'm doing is listening to the Hawks game. Perfect. Because I was going to ask, because I, I'm not a football fan. I'm not even like a soccer fan or anything, but 
I love um, NHL, and um, I thought I've, before I sign off, I've got to ask if he's a hockey fan because I'm a Canucks fan myself. Oh and, gosh, yeah, I am really surprised we've made it through to the uh, second round mm -hmm. and actually picked up a win last night too. So congratulations! Yeah, I mean, there's miracles, right? Miracles happen. <laughs> Um, I, I don't expect it to go much further, but you never know. Stranger things have happened in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, Nox winning the Stanley Cup might be the weirdest one so far, but um, <laughs> yeah. That's, I'll, that's I'll, what we're thinking. As Blackhawks fans, we're thinking the same thing. We were the 12 seed. We had no business being in the playoffs. And, and hey, we beat the Oilers and shut down Connor McDavid. But I will say this while we're, while we're talking hockey. Um, as a diehard hockey fan, I see great parallel between hockey and and independent pro wrestling. Yep. I think they are the two sports that benefit the most from people seeing them live and experiencing them live. My yep. girlfriend is, is now a hockey fan, but she was not before we started dating. And I brought her to Blackhawks games. And she's gone to a whole bunch of different sports things in her life. After her first Blackhawks game, she looked at me mid-game at some point and was just like, this is amazing. I said, exactly. That's hockey, yeah. no matter what you think about it, you go to hockey live, it's entrancing. And so is wrestling. If you go to wrestling live, it's just unbelievable. I completely agree. I was saying to Jamie, my co-host, um, last week, I'm so happy that hockey's back in the same way that I'm so happy crowds are starting to come back to wrestling because mm -hmm. without, the, without the crowd, it's without the atmosphere, it's almost like it's not really happening. And... Like, you can't imagine when somebody scores a goal in hockey without hearing that eruption of the crowd. And, you know, that yeah, I mean, the fan bases are even quite similar in the way that they complain about everything. It's it's almost yep. like it's almost <laughs> like wrestling. <laughs> so, um, I'm just so happy that they're back. And I'll tell you what, I was saying this to my friend from Indiana, uh, Nate, who is a huge Blackhawks fan. I said, if the Canucks don't win this year, I'll be more than happy with the Hawks winning. So... You've got, you've got my support if we don't make it through. Well, I think those two things are, are equally likely, but I appreciate the support. <laughs> but, uh, Steve, I really, really appreciate you taking the time to speak to me today. Um, I'd love to get you back on in the future, maybe after your future shows, and we'll do like a recap of it and just speak a little bit more about Warrior and where it's going in the future. I think it's an incredible promotion. And if you are listening, check them out on Fight TV. I think you can still buy Friday Night Lights mm -hmm. on Fight TV. And I'm sure when there's another show coming up, we'll be doing a promotion for it too. So make sure to check that out. Steve, it's been great talking to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. I think it's still only quite early there. Uh, I'm going to get myself to bed. Uh, but it's been great talking about Warrior and finding out a bit more about it. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate the time. I will come back anytime to talk wrestling and hockey. You just tell me when and I'm here. I'll take you up on that. I'll take it definitely to talk about hockey. <laughs> You've got but, yeah, it. Maybe next time we talk, one of us will have the, uh, not personally, but we might have the Stanley Cup. Who knows? So Don't, don't get me excited. <laughs> as, as CM, I'll leave you with this as, as a hockey wrestling crossover. CM Punk tweeted this out on the first day of the playoffs about 10 days ago. Oh, great. Hockey stress is back in my life. Yes. And that's how I feel. That's so true. <laughs> because because being, from, being a Brit, the games happen while I'm asleep. And I wake up and the first thing I do is check my phone and I'm like, I'm really happy or instantly depressed at the sight that we got slaughtered by somebody. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, oh, for God's sake. But yeah, I get, I completely get that. I get that. And it'll likely happen tonight. But um, yeah, thank you, Steve. And we'll see you next time. Have a great night.